Brian Data asks iCave Answers, iCave Dave, what do you make of recent reports that the M2 Pro and Max chips will be on 3 nanometer silicon? Will this chip be based on the A15 in the iPhone 13 or the A16 in the iPhone 14? Does this foreshadow something that will end up in the chips for the Apple Silicon Mac Pro? And what does it mean for branding when M2 is 5 nanometer silicon? Okay. Let's get into this. So my understanding in the past was that the M2 would be based on the A15 because it is that next generation. That made sense. I thought that would all be on 5 nanometer. That would make sense. Having done a bit more research, it does turn out that you can take a chip that is designed for a 5 nanometer process and you can just shrink it down and you will get some performance increases, which is nice. Um, I don't think, however, that the... Uh, M2 Pro, M2 Max, M2 Ultras will be based on the A16 from next year because that doesn't make any sense for the uh, for the pacing. It would make a lot more sense to do it based on M2. We've had our huge jump. I feel like the M2 series in general will sell less well than M1 did, and that's fine. And I think M1 in the MacBook Air, for example, will still continue to sell pretty well for a little while because it is that entry point. I think we might even keep around an M1 Mac Mini as well, but also bring in a new Mac Mini pretty soon, maybe as soon as September, October time. That would be great. Um... And I think we might also see M2 Pro and M2 Max in September or October, probably October, because September's really for iPhones, Apple Watch, iPad maybe. So I think that's when we'll probably see those. We'll probably see M2 come into uh, iPad Pro as well. That would make sense. Uh, but I do think the M2 Pros that we see then have a 50-50 chance probably of being on 5 nanometer or on 3 nanometer. I really don't know. Uh, I think it would be great if it goes to 3 nanometer. I would expect that the yields will still be too low and I think we might see the 5 nanometer plus technology being used for these and then M3 gets the big jump again. So it almost becomes a TikTok. I still don't accept that this is a fill in the gaps chip. I don't believe that the, that's what is going on here, but I do believe that we have had a, a difficulty. But bear in mind, when I first started making these videos, everyone said 5 nanometers is basically the limit of how small you can go. Anything at four nanometers or lower is going to have the issues of quantum tunneling with uh, electrons moving from one side to the other side of a transistor without actually passing through it. Um, and there's no way that you can go any smaller than five nanometers. Now we're complaining that the three nanometers aren't here quickly enough. And it's been a year and a half since I started making these videos, nearly, yeah, nearly two years. And then people are going to be asking exactly the same about is three nanometers the limit? And then we're going to go to 2.5 maybe. Maybe we just don't go whole nanometers from now on. Maybe we just need a new scale to talk about. But I don't think we've reached the limits of physics just yet. But we are getting blooming close. But every time we move down one nanometer now, if we go from five nanometers to four nanometers, that's basically a 20% reduction. If we go from five to three, that's a 40% reduction. If we go from four to three, that's a 25% reduction. If we go from three to two, that's a 33% reduction. So we can't accelerate at this pace forever and I understand why it's getting difficult for this to happen because we are getting into such small sizes now that um, yeah that's not really sustainable Thanks for watching this clip. If you've got a question for me, use hashtag IKVAnswers down in the comments. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.